bit about a um, couple of things that we've been doing. Uh, one is in um, concert with Cardinal uh, Distillery Company. They're opening a new distillery, Cardinal Spirits, um, and they want us to look at whiskeys to figure out what components make them taste good, uh, especially as they go and make their own. So we do that by what we call gas chromatographic mass spectrometry. So we take the whiskey, we extract out the good tasting stuff, we're going to separate out on this column. So the, the molecules are going to separate based on uh, how greasy they are and what their boiling point is. And we wind up with something that looks a little bit like this. This is Seagram's number seven, or seven crown, I should say. This, each one of these peaks corresponds to one of the components, the flavor-filled components that uh, maybe make it taste good or give it the brown color, uh, get the ethanols way back here, get you drunk. If I blow up and look at that little guy right there, so go right here, we start with these four peaks here, we zoom in on the one at 10.8 minutes. What this represents, each one of the, this is the mass spectrum, what, what molecule was coming out at that point in time. The molecule thankfully falls apart based on its chemical structure. And we have purchased, and the government maintains a library of common compound in the common compound mass spectra. And so here's the spectrum that we observed. There's the library mass spectrum for something called hexenol acetate that tastes like apples. And so that's one of the components in Seagram 7 Crown. And so you could envision then for almost every one of these peaks, we would have a list of components. And so what Cardinal will do when they begin to make their whiskey will be to determine what kind of barrels they're going to use, uh, what uh, how they're going to fire them, what the grain bill is in, in the uh, whiskey, uh, in, the, in, in the raw mash before they, before they distill it, and that will help them um, figure out how they want to make their whiskey. Uh, and the machine actually goes, so this little column actually goes in this little machine right here. So all this is, this is an oven, so our sample goes in here, oven warms up, Molecules will go through that column, and then we measure their mass with that big magnet there in the corner. So if you see this big magnet here, the ions come in, the magnet makes them turn, the radius is determined by their mass and how strong the magnet's turned up to, and we detect them there. So we can scan the magnet and count all the ions. The other thing we do, we don't always just get drunk up here, although getting drunk is fun sometimes. Uh, we also can look at um, what's called metabolomics. So we um, consume food, we turn it into useful components for ourselves. Uh, so what a uh, person in biology, Jason Tennyson, is doing is he is looking at how fruit flies, different populations, di different, um, different uh, ge uh, genome fruit flies adapt to their environment. He looks at that by looking at the small molecules that the bugs create. So literally you take 25 fruit flies, you hit frappe, you spin out all the hard chitin, you extract out all the small organics, the sugars, the proteins, the lipids, all that good stuff. We make them volatile by putting uh, methyl groups on them and then we separate them out. So again, GCMS, there's our whole list of all the different metabolites. Blow up around 26 minutes, there we go. That corresponds to uric acid. If I show here the structure of uric acid, that is how the um, the uh, fruit fly disposes of extra extra DNA. It gives us gout. I don't know if fruit flies get gout or not, but if you have too much of this, you get gout. And so what Dr. Tennyson can do then is monitor how different fruit fly populations uh, metabolize various uh, foods. And such is one of the things oh, that we do up here. It's um, a, um, a what we call an electron multiplier tube. So the ions okay. hit it, they give off electrons, we and we amplify them. Um, Kind of uh, a similar idea to the CCD inside your little camera there, except uh, it is it has 2,000 volts on it instead of uh, five or ten.